welcome to the Six Again podcast, your new destination for all things NRL. Here to bring you everything from team news to best bets are your hosts, Adam Hoy and Jared Mutant. Let's kick off. Hey guys, welcome into Six Again. Uh, my name's Tired. With me is. Oh, yeah. Is that how you start in this? Hey guys, I'm Jared. Um, Adam is absolutely cooked. He's looking very tired. Not cooked as in baked, as in cooked as in exhausted, tired. Yeah, goes both ways. I think that's been um, my intro the last few episodes, actually. Which, yeah, I'm starting to feel tired, but it's now my bedtime, so. Yeah, we actually are starting this quite late tonight. It's nine o'clock on a Monday night. We couldn't get this done Sunday. Uh, my wife and I are trying to get our house ready for sale with two kids, age three and under, or three and three and two. Um, so I'm back to work today, broken fingers, sick, all the stuff above, and um, we thought trying to podcast would be a good idea. <laughs> it's just catching up. Yeah. Tunes are really good today, though, so uh, it's not like anything's think, been happening in league, which is good. I feel like it's been more interesting off-field this weekend than on-field. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's such oh, a, yeah. It was a bad weekend. If we weren't doing this podcast, I would have watched maybe two of the eight games because they were boring as anything. Yeah, they, Compared they, to what we've it's been gone seeing. past the point of exciting football, like rival teams now, and now it's kind of like just trying to get through all those games where it's, yeah, it's, not, it's not that interesting. Yeah, there were there were there were pieces of quite good footy this weekend. Um, South West threw up a little bit. Uh, Storm Canberra never really got to great heights, but that's probably more based on injuries. Like when the highlight of a game's a bunker decision for a Simbin not even oh. try, you're going to be like, yeah, this game could could have been better. Um, Look, Titans worried, if, if, bad, if, and that's not if, the one that we're If there's any dodgy call that goes in a game, I hope I always hope it goes. In a Canberra game, because even no, if it goes no. for Canberra, Ricky Stewart's going to tee off every single time, and that's just good entertainment. Oh man, I love the camera on his face. Yeah, it went upstairs, and then when Simonson got sinbinned, and then when Melbourne scored, oh man, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I would honestly, I would hate to play for him and play bad though. Because I, he, oh, I reckon he, he would give a bigger spray than Rick, uh, Craig Bellamy would. I don't reckon. think he's got anything left. I think he just tricks it all at the NRL and the amount of times they've been. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into some, some bunker issues. So I think the, the big thing, I guess, today that dropped was uh, the fact that Jay Nockenbore and Corey Hawira Naira, um, we knew that they, they'd been stood down by the NRL. They had their appeal, heard. Uh, today, oh sorry, the re- the sentence got read out today, or their findings, and they're completely reinstated. Um, they were given uh, what's the word? Revised suspensions, and those suspensions end up being backdated. So Corey, Corey, how we were in Ira, end up getting a ten match suspension and a fifteen thousand dollar fine. So we've just finished round nine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yep. he's got one suspend, one game left, and then he can be back playing by round 11. Uh, Jaden Ockenbaugh had a $22,500 fine and a 14 game ban, so he'll be ready for selection round 15. So that's a couple of players who you'd expect would slot straight back into Canterbury starting. Well, I, I hope not, because uh, I understand that um, Bulldogs still have to pay them. Which is part of it, you know, they have to pay them because their contracts got reinstated. They do, but not, yeah. they didn't have to pay them um, this time off. If Dean Pay wanted to put He's a standard at Bulldogs, it's really loud. Um, if Dean Pay wanted, I drew a smiley face. Um, if Dean Pay wanted to put a standard at Bulldogs, uh, he could um, just go. Well, we, there's no reserve grade this year. Go sit in the bench. I reckon. I think they did that by setting, standing them down at the start. Yeah, but 
The problem is now they the can't fire The Bulldogs didn't reinstate them. The NRL did. Yeah, so the Bulldogs can't fire them because it'd be breach of contract because there's no mm. legitimate reason to do that. Yeah, no, but well, that's true. for them to earn a good contract after this, after their current contract, they'd have to play well for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs are allowed to say, no, we're not going to pick you. You're not going into the squads. Oh, yeah, that's they can do that. Actually, yeah, I, that, um, well, they lost sponsors over this, the Bulldogs. That's, um, yeah, so I would I would seriously thinking about putting him at, you know, number 25 every day and just goes, no, nah, I, I don't have to play you. No, that's true. And the fact that the more and more it looks as though Dean Pay won't be there next year, the fact that Bulldogs won't be playing finals football, you would assume, um, yeah, it would be well within his rights to just stick him on the bench and say, mm. by all accounts, um, what Canterbury's next step at the moment is, because the contracts have been reinstated, however, Naira is on the books at Canterbury till the end of 2022. Oakenball is on the books till the end of 2021. Um, they're still players contracted to Canterbury. Now, whispers came out, or well, not whispers, more talks that, the Warriors, St. George, and who's the team I'm missing? Have Cronulla. Approached, um, Cronulla have approached Power and I already throughout the season, saying if you get reinstated, we'd like to have you. Um, that was before the news came out that the contracts have been reinstated through to the full term. So there'd have to be a buyout there of his contract by whichever club signs him, um, or they'd be paying, say, no, I'd say it'd have to be a full payout because Canterbury need the money. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where that stands. However, Nair will be able to be picked as of week 11 uh, at Ockenball by week 15. And the club is working with NRL to see how this contract saga will now play out. Sticking with the Bulldogs, I guess. Jake Avarillo is one of three players this weekend that has been stood down with regards to COVID-19 protocols. Um, Jake Avarillo lives with his parents. His parents went out to dinner at that hotel in Sydney where there's been nine confirmed COVID cases of travellers coming up from Victoria. Avarillo wasn't at the restaurant or the hotel, sorry, um, but his parents were. So he's in quarantine while they're waiting for his parents' tests to come back. Um, I guess it's it's no fault of his own. Um, Just unfortunate, the poor bastard. Yeah. So we would we'd assume he's not going to be playing um, this week, depending on how quickly the test can come back. But he's been placed in isolation. Uh, let's have a look. Who are the other two players that are involved in COVID stuff? Over? Oh, so you got that big fella from Parramatta, Ulatongi. There he is. Stefano. That's it. So he makes his debut. This is that huge 20-year-old rookie for Parramatta. Makes his debut. Plays about 60 seconds, didn't he? Yeah, he made one run. One run. Um, and at the end of the game, he ran over into the crowd and hugged his friends and family members. Yay, I've made my debut. I've been on an NRL field. Hug me and let's take photos. Oh, wait. I just came in contact with the crowd. Yeah. So look, isolation. look, I don't... <laughs> It was stupid what he'd done. But in saying that too, I'm not overly mad at him for it because No. Like, yeah. I it, it was it was it was dumb. But the thing is that it was a big deal in his life and he went to celebrate it. So yeah. it is what it is. And then the third one is. So in, in that one. case again, his friends and family everyone that was in contact with him or in the vicinity has been sent for testing. If any of them come back positive, you would say that um, he'll be out for the full 14 days until... That means Parramatta are too. No, 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 because he's been... Oh, yeah, maybe if he went straight into the change rooms afterwards. Yeah, he but went straight into the change room. So if they're positive oh, yeah. and they hugged him, Parramatta have to be isolated for seven days. Oh. I can't... Which I, I, look, I don't see it happening, but that would be the reality of it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the impact is preparation. Oh, he's bound for the West Tigers next year. Oh, yeah, I saw that yeah. be a deal or something. Yeah. Um, so that's that one. And then I guess probably the weirdest one, uh, but probably biggest one. So 
one of the kind of weird but awesome highlights of the weekend was the amount of tries scored by a few people. So we know uh, a gay guy got a hat trick. Um, who else got a bag full? Uh, was it the Charlie Staines? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. I feel like there was someone else as well. No, Nick, I can't Nick remember. Staines made his debut for Penrith in the centres. Dean Fare had been ruled out. Uh, comes in, makes his debut, scores four tries, which is ridiculous on that absolute smoking yeah. of Cronulla. Did you see what happened at the pub on that? No. So his, his local pub put up a right. thing that every time this guy scores a try, everyone in the bar gets a free beer. No way. So they, and, they, and they tweeted it out. And then at the, like, the 65th minute mark, they tweeted at him specifically while he's playing, stop scoring tries, we can't afford this. <laughs> and then they put underneath it, promotion over or something like that because he scored four tries. And oh, that's there awesome. was like more people coming into the pub, the more he scored. <laughs> that's great. Oh, you can't just pull out of a thing like that. <laughs> no, I think it was more of a joke kind of thing. But like, it, it was good banter from it. It was great. It was, and that's really look, cool. If I played in the NRL and my and Palmwood's pub doesn't do that, I'll be mad. Yeah, so would I actually. <laughs> Every time Jared gets smashed, let's buy a beer. Oh, get a beer. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, that's so, gonna be, you're gonna get real drunk. Uh huh. Uh, let's have a look. So what what pretty much happened is he hosted ten visitors at his home after a four try effort, uh, including his parents, his sister, um, the parents of his partner, and four friends. Now. You can, like in Sydney at the moment, you can hold up to 10 people at your house. However, they can't all be there at once. So they have to be in groups of no more than five. So that's the first breach that he had. All 10 were there at the same time. So he'd had five there and then five later on. Um, that would have been fine. A completely random thing from he, there, from that, um, early in the hours of Sunday morning, he suffered a case of locked jaw, which is literally what it sounds like where your jaw is locked in a certain position can come from uh, whether you, if you've had, say, your jaw broken earlier in life and the ligaments or muscles aren't as strong as they used to be, it can just be a loosening or a weakening in those muscles and your jaw pretty much drops out and locks into place. So he had to go to hospital for that. He was released in the early hours of the morning, but he's since been... I guess, well, not charged, stood down from playing and training um, due to the fact that he didn't tell the NRL that he had people around um, and he didn't also tell the NRL that he was going to okay. hospital to receive treatment. I understand that lockjaw is important, but Dean Pay has quit as Bulldogs coach. Has he? Just then? Yeah. Yeah. And Bulldogs are seeking permission to speak with Trent Barrett. Well, Trent Barrett's Which, already been given permission from Penrith I, earlier today. I don't understand. I yeah, do I don't not understand, understand because he, he, he is not going to save them shit. No. He's not. I, I went through that the hard way with Manly. Yeah. Uh, he, he is. Faster than this one. That's, he is not going to be able to pull them out. They're going to need someone like a really, really good coach to pull them out of this because it's not Dean Pay's fault. He, he's got a shit roster. Yeah, it's we went through it. What did we say? Only Will Hopper Whitey and <laughs> maybe with teams Lesniak and nah, Jack. Uh Dylan Napper on a yeah. bench maybe or a start yeah, but that's Well if you're Queensland he's a starter. <laughs> yeah. Um but no, like he, he he walked in and he told him he literally told him that it's gonna take five years to rebuild. And Bulldogs oh, after three yeah, when he started. Oh, this, yeah. Nathan yeah. Brown said the same thing when he came to Newcastle. Yeah. And, um, when, and so Dean Pay came in and told the Bulldogs more it's going to take five years. And they're like, okay, you're a Bulldogs legend. We're going to give you those five years. And after three years, Bulldogs like, oh, you're playing too bad. See ya. So been there for three years. Yeah. Holy crap. Poor fella. Yeah. Because I think he took over Hazlitt, didn't he? How could you hang out there for three years? Yeah, I think he would have taken over Hasler. What the hell? So, who just dropped that news? Are they reliable? Everyone. Oh, okay. 
So that's, oh yeah, there we go. But yeah, so um, Phil, so, because we, I remember you and me having this conversation. Actually, we said that um, you actually asked the question: Would you keep Dean Pay on just yeah. to see how he would go with a decent roster? Yeah. And everyone we talked to, because that was the night we asked it to w- Wally and Hazard when they were on. And everyone yeah. said they always play with a great attitude. They just don't have the skill to get them over the line. So if he can get the attitude of that and a good team, it'd be really interesting how he went. It's exactly the same situation that uh, my hockey team's in. We were historically, historically bad this year. Um, and, and it came out to the fans. Uh, the club had a, a, an option um, for our coach. He has one season left. Uh, we could have cut our losses with him a season early. Uh, and our new GM said, no, no, we'll keep him on for the next year, at least to see out his contract. He's never had a good roster to work with. Um, out of our 18 players, there's two, maybe three, that would get a starting spot in another team with that bad but it's exactly the same thing we haven't seen what this guy can do with a decent roster his his goal was improve the young players and helping their development that's what he was getting judged on not the results and i think but unfortunately for for bulldogs for them for them to turn around the team they won't keep many of their young fellas yeah yeah they'd probably keep Maybe Ogden. Um, they're not going to keep Lewis. They're not going to keep. Well, that's the thing. They were struggling to sign players because people didn't know who their coach was going to be. How many players? Yeah. Are there? Oh yeah, Trent Barrett's the coach. I'm going to sign there. All the Pembroke and Manly players. <laughs> well, Manly players weren't. Like, yeah, I said nice I things know. about him, but we've. I, I don't know if Mar- if Barrett's a stop go stop gap until next year because I did Why read an article. Why are going to get a stopgap? What's the point of sack and pay? Well, they're better off when Jim Dimmick in there. Um, they didn't sack and quit. Oh, if, um, yeah, but if you're... Yeah. With 10 weeks to go, what's the point of hiring a new coach and having to set up well, and everything? When yeah, well, there? that's right because I also read an article that Bulldogs inquired about Eddie Jones. Yeah. Which I would be... Vanilla, hasn't he? Yeah, no, I, I'd be amazed. I mean, I'd love it if Eddie Jones came in. Mm. I reckon he'd be perfect coach for Bulldogs right now. But if they can't get anyone, I don't think Barrett's the option. I reckon Toofy would be a better option. That would be crazy. Actually, you yeah. know, really weird. You got Hasler's going from Manly to Bulldogs. If you had yeah. Barrett, or if you had Toofy, it's all Manly to Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I would love of, uh, Tuvi in there because he would. He, he's a good coach. Yeah, he is. He, yeah, he's a good coach. So, and I reckon out of everyone on the market right now, he's the best coach. To be honest, out of I'm like maybe Sean, stand out there. maybe Sean Wayne, Sean maybe Wayne, you've Sean got Wayne. Ferner, who hasn't had a gig for a while. No, you've got no, no, Anthony Griffin. No. You're not getting rid of Ferner. He's at Newcastle right now. Leave yeah, him I alone. know. I'm thinking of all the assistant coaches right now. You've got John Cartwright. Uh, you've got Nathan Brown. You've got Stephen Kerr. Tooby's better. Tooby's got... better. Yeah, I know. But I'm just trying to list like all the assistants at the moment that were previous head coaches. Yeah. Um, who's in... Um... Oh, I have a feeling there's someone in Michael Maguire's group. I no, remember. I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I don't see Barrett being... Jason Taylor. Jason Taylor? <laughs> ah, poor man, like... Look, you, you got your free agents and stuff. If you got, let's say, a David Fafida, if Bulldogs wanted to chase him, is he going to look at Barrett and be like, yeah, that's the guy who's going to be able to take me to the next level of my career? Yeah. Probably say no. Yeah, no, so Tigers don't have anyone. They have Josh Hodson. Josh Hodson? No, no, um, Brett Hodson. Brett Hodson. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, maybe there's someone else. Um, yeah, that's... 
I, I they got Ronnie. They got Ronnie Palmer for walking. Um, my jumping. Well, not. I'm not going to say jumping ship. Just out on his own terms. Um, he's going. Oh, to oh, oh. What? What's so, his three third year into a five year contract? No, I don't think he was on for five years, but they he told him it'd take five years. So I wonder. Uh, Oh, this was was this the final year of his contract? No, uh, I'm not sure. But look, oh, if if Newcastle had the money and they could pick up Dean Pay, I would not be mad. I just I have a lot of respect for him. For I, I I don't know if it's a soft spot for me that a that a coach has a shit roster and they play well, like not play well, so they have a good attitude. I I always feel like that's a sign of a good coach to yeah. have that. Um, but look, all you got to do is turn around and go, you got to compare Bulldogs right now to the say Broncos, St. George. Mm -hmm. Um, that's all you got to do. And then that comes from the coach. Like you got to say that the attitude of Cowboys reflects, uh, Broncos reflects Anthony Seabold. Mm -hmm. The attitude of St. George Illawarra, I'm not, I'm saying... You know, they're doing well now, but that reflects um, yeah. McGregor. McGregor. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of like just... going off in a weird-ass tangent. It, it yeah, I, I just... Um, to a, I put out a, a tweet on the weekend with regards to this battle of the bottom. Like, we've had... If you actually count back this season, we've had four games where last and second last have versed each other. And this weekend was Titans and... Um, Sorry, it was Broncos and Bulldogs. So I think I put it out there for the battle of the bottom was you had Bulldogs and Dragons. Bulldogs beat Dragons, right? Um, yeah, so Bulldogs have beaten Dragons. Dragons have beaten uh, Broncos. Yeah. Yeah? Broncos yeah. have beaten... Um, Bulldogs. Is it? Bulldogs. And... Titans have beaten Broncos. So all four of the those bottom teams um, have beaten each other pretty much like in a cycle. So I said, who is actually the worst team? Well, he, he, there's a few ways to look at that. Like... So here it is. Bulldogs beat Dragons. Dragons beat Titans. Titans beat Broncos. Broncos beat Bulldogs. Yeah, okay. So there's a few ways to look at it. If you go just purely on depth in their squad... Uh, you'd have to say Bulldogs. Bulldogs have the worst roster out of the four. If you go on skill, uh, the best team on just on the team... Dragons. 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 Um, if you go on attitude, Bulldogs are the best team. Like, yeah. Bulldogs. So it just depends how you like your rugby league. What do you reckon is the worst team? I just think I personally, every time there's been two teams on the bottom verse in each other, we've had four different winners. Yeah, I, I, I just so I, I believe that a team's not going to win a grand final with a shit attitude. So for me, that um, the proven teams like the Broncos and the St George, as far as their talent and squad, they're the worst teams right now, just because they're not playing to their potential. Oh, I like it. Um, can't forget what else. What else we're talking about? Yeah, anyway, okay, from one person who's walked before he got fired to three people who can't get fired. Um, let's talk about the bunker. So, that's a pretty good segue. I like that. So over Yeah, the, but we're not having this argument again. No, nah, we had enough arguments on the weekend. Over this... Yeah, this that's my point, weekend, everyone. Me and Adam another... Connor. Me, me and Adam Connor had a bit of a showdown over... What messenger, messenger or something on the way yeah. to, on the weekend about this subject? <laughs> so what we're referring to here is the sin binning of Bailey Simonson in the Melbourne Storm Canberra game, which was a hundred percent the wrong call. Um, I agree. Thank you. And <laughs> the fact that what we ended up arguing about was um, I I said something along the lines of there's not enough. Um, with regards to penalties for the bunker. And, uh, sorry, the leash that they've got to get things wrong is too long. They shouldn't be making the mistakes that they get, uh, that they've been making. 
separate to the rest on the field. The rest on the field. You also said that these are costing teams games. Yeah. What no. Who's by? What? That's a try that shouldn't that's a try that wouldn't have been scored. Okay. Okay. Final okay. last year. So I I I said it before, I will never agree with someone complaining about a referee on the field because he's in it, he's running just as hard he's just as much endurance as the referee mm-hmm. as the players, but he's thinking at the same time, which really mm-hmm. makes it hard. And when you think about the referees don't make that many mistakes. Mm-hmm. I 100% agree with you. The bunker makes too many mistakes for the oh, technology yeah. they have. But I will never agree with someone saying that the bunker has cost someone an NRL game. Just because that Canberra or any other team make more mistakes than the bunker does. They have more opportunity to score. No matter how you swing everything, players dictate more what happens on the field than the referees at a bunker do. Yeah. So it's never the bunker's fault. I would, I believe it's the players' fault more than the bunker that don't win a game. I think you're talking their quantity over quality. So the quantity of mistakes that they make are higher. Both teams are always going to make knock-ons. Both teams are always going to make forward passes. Rada, rada, rada. Each of those little mistakes generally even themselves out not always but generally even themselves out over a whole game and it's pretty rare that a knock-on in play that's not picked up will end up deciding a huge part of the game it will though hey you you said give me an example okay Every time Cronut, every time Canberra knocked the ball on in the first half, they were on their attacking Melbourne's line. I think the percentage at one point was like 70-30 with Cronulla I mean Canberra on Melbourne's line. Every mm. time they got close, they dropped the ball. Yeah, we'll say they held onto the ball. There's still 13 Melbourne players there against 13 Raiders players. Yes, and I guarantee you, if they sustain that pressure for a long time, there's no team in the competition is going to hold them out. Yeah, but if Melbourne had kept the ball... So if they didn't drop the ball, I am 95% certain they would have scored. Melbourne are are good defensively. They aren't good with 10 minutes attacking them all. Okay, so say Melbourne held the ball, you can guarantee that they would have scored. Yeah, but I'm just saying for this 10-minute period. Yeah. So for this 10-minute period, if Canberra built pressure, didn't throw silly passes, didn't drop the ball, Melbourne wouldn't have got to the other end for that to happen. For the sim to happen at all. So Canberra would have scored the try. There's so you're talking about try. you're talking about a culmination of events, not just one. Yeah, but the the, the players still have was, more of an this opportunity. This was one wrong decision. Yes. Looked at yes. in slow motion on a screen. Over 12 drop balls. No, they didn't. So they dropped the ball. I'm not saying that's the exact fact. Canberra they had the ball. seven knock-ons. Melbourne had six. There wasn't this huge discrepancy between the two teams. There was a no, I'm not saying there's a discrepancy between the two teams. I'm saying that Canberra dropped the ball a lot more than they should have in that first half. When they're yeah, attacking but the line. that's still a culmination of errors. The bunker's decision to sin bin Simonson for 10 minutes had a much bigger impact on the game because literally two tackles later, Melbourne scored by running down the wing that Simonson would have been on. And it also comes down to they both scored And they end tries. up losing by six points. Yeah. It's, a tr- it's still a try. Yeah, because it, that, they still had to defend their error. It wasn't a bunker's fault that he scored the try. Yeah, it was, because Simonson would have been in that gap. You don't practice 12... <laughs> you don't know that. In train- you don't know that. He could have slipped over. He could have slipped over. Wing. He could have slipped over. He would have to cover two positions because his winger wasn't there because he got Simbin for a stupid bunker call. No, but he, he, you don't going, know what... He took out Josh Adokar. Bullshit. Oh, by the way, and Cameron line. dropped the ball, uh, made 11 errors. Um... They did not. They made seven. Eleven. And Melbourne made Open 12. argument last night. Okay, so the bottom line is that you don't know they wouldn't have scored that try. 
you don't know if Adak Carr would have ran over Simonson. The point is that... They wouldn't have run down that side if Simonson... It, it's the exact way. same point as the NRL Grand Final. Yes, they got a shit call from the two referees, right? Yeah. But the thing is, was it the referee's fault they missed the four tackles that ended up in a try? Uh, the first two or three, yeah. Because half the team... So were... you blame the referees for a missed tackle? Well, I'm blaming both referees because you've got half the team looking at one guy saying it's six again. Why is that guy right? Yeah, but they tackled him two times before that. Yeah. So you're, you, you, you're saying that professional athletes who aren't well, playing to the whistle... 12 errors to Storm. Okay, I was looking at first half. 12 errors to Storm, 11 to Canberra. See? Storm yeah, so I just said, you got to start trusting me. Um, <laughs> I was looking at first half when we are arguing. Um, so... You you can't you can't tell me that a professional athlete yeah. is that dictated by a bad call. The whole team misses that many tackles to lead to Tedesco try in that grand final. But it wouldn't have even been that situation if they got the call right. Doesn't matter. It they don't matter. have to miss. It's not the player's fault. It's not the referee's fault. Sorry, that the, the players put them the in that position by not doing <laughs> their job. Stop giving them excuses. To miss tackles. We've given the refs enough excuses. They've got the easiest job on the field. They do not. They do too. <laughs> no, no, they them. don't. Anthony six Milford of them doing the, the one it, job. It is not. The point is that as a professional athlete, you cannot blame a referee in the heat of play for you missing a tackle. No. And that's what you're telling the Raiders they should be doing. Because I just said earlier, they missed four tackles, which led to a try. And I said, can you blame for them? You said the first couple, you blame on the referee. Straight after the six again call, yeah, because half the team was looking at the rest. Doesn't of- matter. Yeah, it's our ball. Look, what, what did New- how did Newcastle lose that game on the weekend? Because they, they were didn't shit. play the referee. What? They didn't play the referee. That's the bottom line. Did you see the last try that um, Sevo scored? No, it was boring as hell. Switched yeah, to- so Mitchell Pierce done a high tackle, which is contentious. Doesn't matter. It was, a sh- it was a high tackle, but he got up, started complaining about it. Newcastle team started complaining about it. They all had their arms up in the air. Clint Gunson quick tapped it, ran down the field, drawn past Ponga, put Sevo over the line. Yeah. Who's... What? Yeah. Whose fault is that? Newcastle or the referees? Was the call right? Yeah. What's the players? And if it was wrong? What's that the... he let him run... For... Newcastle let Gufferson run 40 metres untouched with What's the ball in his hand. A... If they've called a penalty and there's a stoppage in play, well, then, yeah, it's the players' fault. So you've got... A whistle's been blown. Play stop. There's nothing to react to. You just get yourselves back. Yeah, but he, he took the quick tap as soon as that happened. Well, so if the penalty's been blown, that's the end of the play. If they know that a penalty could come from it, that's the player's fault. Yeah, so it's the, play, it's the player's fault. Same as the St. George thing, uh, Canberra thing. It's, it's 100% the player's fault. You can't blame a player, a referee, for a missed tackle. That's 100%. Pretty sure if we put this out to a poll, I'd beat you 100% to nil. I, I, I'll argue with everybody. I know, but you'll lose everybody as well. No, I won't. No, I won't. Because bottom just, court, the uh, bottom line is these refs get, especially the bunker refs, and the bullshit excuse that Graham Annesley said, no one from the bunker is going to be dropped because we only have three players, uh, three people, not in players, three people trained to use this. Yeah, thing. I don't agree with that. It's like That's they're like their own television program. That's crap. You've got all this money stored and wasted. Train some more people up. So they've got well, that's what annoys me. Decisions. You're losing eight referees a week, weekend. Give them some on-the-go job training. Literally, that sort of mistake, you could get someone off the street to do it and press the right button. Ah, and that's another argument for them. A lot of NRL, a lot of NRL rules are under interpretation of the person watching the game. Well, they're interpreting it wrong. <laughs> According to you, that's the point. All right, Simonson, should he have been Simbin? No, I don't agree. No, it was fucking stupid. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Back, milks it. The, these guys are professional athletes. They can't let something like this 
as an excuse to miss tackles. They if cannot do a tackle it. for that try. Well, it's even worse because they weren't covering. Where was Klockstad? In his fullback position. He can't just jump. Which is supposed to be covering. Is it not? You, you didn't cover watch it, did you? Full... What? You didn't watch that try, did you? It doesn't matter if I watched it or they not. They ran down the blind him. side, the first two plays. Cooper Cronk called it. He said Smith's going to take him to the post, which he did. Then on the fourth tackle, your fullback's not going to be on the freaking wing on the fourth tackle. They brought everyone over towards the post. Then they did a sweet play that um, Cooper Cronk said, that's something that Billy and I used to practice, um, where uh, he's the second rower. I'm glad you brought up Billy Slater because he would have been there. Ran it to ran it to the line, turned around, popped the wraparound ball to Pappenhausen, gave him the overlap. Oh, so I'm, man, as he should. I'm glad. Um, I'm Who glad you brought it? up Billy Slater because Billy Slater would have been there. James Tedesco no, would have been there. No, Trump, Tom Travojevic would have been there. And they all still would have not saved the try. At least he would have put unless some contact cover, on it. Unless they can cover, what, eight metres of air? None of them. No, have I've, uh, Tr- Tom Travojevic could. Point is, I will never blame a referee decision on losing a game. No matter how you swing it, you'll never convince me. The referee should get sacked if they make a call that bad and they're never going to because they're a protected species. Which how, is, but how come players don't get do sacked for playing that? They should be. That's oh, but they don't. So what? What? What's the difference between players? Of course they and do. Benji referees? Marshall got dropped because he had the most missed tackles. He kept making yeah over a four week period over and over. Yeah, but the over a full week. Making these mistakes all season and last. Yeah, but there's, play, they there's the players making job. worse mistakes than you than um thing than yeah. And if um, the coach has the balls, I'll drop. And we talked about this last week with Seabold. He should have yeah. three or four of his players weeks ago. And they're yeah, probably, they, well, and then probably look, look what um Nickel Clockstar did. That's a little bit letting that first try in. He should be dropped for that as far as you're concerned. That's a big no, mistake I, that led to a try. It's also only the first mistake of his that I've seen that's done that. Doesn't matter. But there's a reason why Ruben Garrick... But if you want to put a standard manly, there, you've got to start why saying Darius your first Boyd mistakes doesn't play gone. fullback for Broncos. If, yeah, you, but, if you're repeating mistakes over and over, you'll get sacked. No one so, will be okay. fullback, so you can't... So what's your, what, how many you mistakes do you let make before you get fired as a player? That's up to your coach. <laughs> but you're saying the, play, the, re, the bunker should be hooked. How, after how many mistakes do you reckon a bunker guy should be hooked? That's up to Annesley, but I'd say they would have by now because Annesley's only excuse is no one's going to get stood down because we don't yeah, have anyone yeah, to play. But how... That's pretty much saying if we had something to replace. How many are you down? Down? Huh? Yeah, I, I know. I'm not denying that fact. I'm asking you, as a referee coach, as a coach in the rugby league, how many major mistakes are you letting go before you get in drop, you're dropping them? In the bunker? No. As a coach, in big mistakes, because we're comparing Clockstad to what he did making that mistake. I think you're making mistake. a very broad argument compared to a very specific one. No. I'm not, because my point is that... A bunker's not the same as an on-field ref. They're sitting in a room with no other outside influences and they press a button after looking at multiple replays. It's completely different. Yeah, but my point is that you've got to make a mistake for the job you get paid for. Clockstad's job to get paid for is to score tries and defend tries. He let a try in from a dumb mistake. How many times does he have to do that before he gets fired in your book? No, that's not a fullback role. That's every player's role. Okay, so this every way, if player's it gets to the fullback, it means I'll get twelve people have missed him. Yeah, but it's a kick diffusion, which is a fullback's role. Okay. So ha- how many to- how many mistakes does he have to make that leads to a try before you fire him? I don't know. I don't. So, I, but you, as far as the bunker goes, you're your like argument. got what? That job's easy. No <laughs> not as variables. easy as you think. As I said, a lot of... Is that a cement? No. Yes. I can't wait for next year. If Flanders gets his way and captains get two challenges and we can get rid of the bunker. Oh, I hope not. It's so good. They're using it to waste time now. I'd rather than waste time than calls like this go wrong. <laughs> okay, we promised we wouldn't do that again. You can't coach for them fucking up like they do. 
It doesn't matter. You coach for backing up from mistakes. You coach backing up mistakes. That's a big thing in coaching. Can you imagine that at coach? All right, guys, one of our players just got simbin for no reason. So let's defend with 12 people. That's how you got to play the game. That's crap. That's crap. (laughs) In other words, I even forgot what we were looking at. Uh, Playing the ball off the... I'll talk about Origin next next time. It looks like players are in um, would be keen on a mid season stoppage, but we can talk about we'll talk about that one on Thursday. Um, before we get to games, three things that I've seen Mark creeping back in. Have they completely forgotten about the play the ball rule that you've actually got to touch it with your foot? Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's back to that. The referees have step over. It. Referees are literally laser eyed on the rock oh. looking for infringements now. So there's so many so, stupid rules. They keep changing them, and they're so fucking focused on one thing. And that's why I feel sorry for referees. But keep going. Put the ball down. Put your foot on it. Play the ball. Don't just step over it like a lazy shit. Um, I don't get why the defensive team gets frustrated when the attacking team walks over the mark to play the ball. Does anyone else understand right. that? So, like, the guy's running with the ball, gets tackled, the guy's holding on him, so he takes another couple of steps, tries pushing him off, takes another couple of steps, and then plays the ball. Why are the defenders getting shitty with that? Because he's making two more metres than he should. Yeah, which gives the defence an advantage. What? Moving forward? Mm-hmm. Gives the defence... Because it slows down your ruck, you're saying? No. Nah. What's the advantage? Once the once there's been once the ball's forward momentum stopped, right? And they've yelled held or whatever. If they let go, or what, it, or even half let go, and the ball player walks another couple of steps forward, that defensive line doesn't have to take those same steps backwards. Once that tackle's been finished, the defensive line is set at ten meters from there. So if the player with the ball takes another two or three steps forward. And plays it. The defensive line all of a sudden is only eight meters and seven. Right. Actually, gives the okay. an advantage. So I don't get why the defense. So are look, um, upset mm, with it. It, you, you, it gives the attack. I'd be upset. Left room to work with. Yeah, I'd be upset as, because as say a defensive if that team. At, yep. Say that happened every single tackle. Mm. So theoretically, um, they make two meters. Uh-huh. Five tackles, they make ten meters. No, they don't, but yeah. Why wouldn't they? Because you don't have to drop the two metres that they walk towards you. No, but they're still forward that extra 10 metres. You're, look, you're, you're looking at the defensive line being eight metres. Yeah. I'm looking at going forward in a set of six, they're making 10 extra metres from where No, 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 no. You, mis, you misheard me. If that ta- Once the tackle's done, say the tackle's... Say the guy yeah. gets tackled on the 10 metre line... And the defense yeah. is at the 20 meter line, right? Mm-hmm. The call is held at 10 meters. He walks forward mm-hmm. another two meters and plays the ball. Yeah. The defense doesn't have to move backwards from 20. It's yeah. still going to be there. I, 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 it's I only understand an eight meter that. gap. So they're not going No, no, no. Around. You're looking at individual tackles. I'm looking at the whole set. Yeah. It so two meters, two meters per tackle is 10 meters that they're moving forward. Yes, the um, individually two times five yeah. is ten. I okay. That. Thank you. Okay. Um, awesome. Um, for the fifth tackle, they're ten meters ahead of where you theoretically tackle them because they're taking two meters after the ruck's called held. So that's the difference between kicking on the forty and kicking on the thirty. No, that's a big difference. No. Why? Because that means you or defense would have had to drop 10 meters over those play the balls, which they wouldn't have. If you're running the ball and you get tackled or whatever, the rest sets are 10 meters. If you walk forward as the ball player, another nine yeah, meters. You're looking from defensive side. Defense doesn't matter. I'm looking. <laughs> That's, I understand that. The further you it. move towards the defensive line as an attacker, you're giving yourself a disadvantage because you're giving your ball players less time. Yes, but you're still making an extra less, 10 metres after the ruck's called held. So? 
So that means, like I said, if you theoretically... You're not going to move any further down the field because you're close. The defense hasn't moved backwards. You're still... But you're saying every tackle, they move an extra two metres ahead. Within that 10-metre area that's already yes, set. But that's still the two metres. Okay. So then the next tackle, say if they make 10 metres... That's the a next tackle, advantage. they probably won't even get past that play. No, that's the point. You said probably. I'm saying that you are making that tackle. Every tackle gets an extra two metres than what it should. That means in the set of six, they get an extra 10 metres that they shouldn't be getting. Okay. Somehow, keep going. Somehow, well, you just said they make two two meters extra every tackle. That's what you just said. They're not yes. making two extra meters. They're just you just said they're moving forward. Two. You only make meters if you push the defense backwards. Defense hasn't moved. The closer no. you walk to the defensive line before you play the ball, the easier it is for the defense. There's no way they're even going to get past the ruck the next play. So instead of the defense having to run up 10 meters to make the tackle, they might only have to run three meters and you're going to get hit before the second pass even gets, goes away. If I'm a defender, I'm letting them walk as far forward as they can because my defensive line only has to run three meters to make a tackle instead of 10. I'm not. Okay. No way. Because you yardage. only have to run five as is. And. Oh, because they'll be running up to me. Yeah, they wouldn't even make that five. It'd be less. So you're As running up eight. Team, I'm letting them come up like a rugby union off sidelines. So I only have to jump three metres nah. forward. No way in hell because they're making an extra 10 metres per set. For 40, kicking on the 40 instead of the 30. Done and dusted. You, you're in trouble. I'd rather someone kick from the 30 metre line and have a 10 metre defensive line every, every tackle than someone kick from the 40 metre line and have an eight metre defensive line every tackle. I certainly think you're getting the point. Anyway, um, if a player's hurt and they're defending, should the ref stop the game? No. Good, no. Thank you. That's one thing I think they need to clear up. They're stopping the game yeah. with cramps and fucking like... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's horrible. Like, it's, like it's amazing that. how many how many players whose team just got to drop out against them suddenly have cramps. It's so bad. Oh, um, did you see that one that Cam Smith and the Melbourne yeah, Storm it was horrible. In interchange? Good on the refs. Yeah. Not, it should have been Smith as well, but got rid of the... Um, um, I, I would actually want to poke on um, how every team's manipulating the HIA as well. And I'm going to pick on New, I'm going to pick on Newcastle right now because they're really bad at it. So on the weekend, Ponga got smacked by Wonga Blake and he was oh, clearly that was a had great shot. It, it, look, he got him in the head. I, I don't, I'm not saying it wasn't a good shot, but he got him in the head. It, it is what it is. Um, he yeah, probably should have had to go off for 10. Straight away. Yeah, he should have. He took, he, 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 he took missed a the goal yeah. and then came came off for it and then that was two minutes before half time. So he got a whole half time came back. But the one that pisses me off though is later in the game, he got a head knock again, taking a kick like he does because he lands on the yeah. ground. He has really bad whiplash, and he got he should have been HIA. Honestly, it was his second time he looked like he was concussed. Yeah. There's no way in hell he wasn't. I believe if it was anyone but Ponga or probably Pierce as well, they would have went off. But the fact it's a key player, he didn't go off. And I don't believe that's on. I reckon that's completely wrong. Just because of the fact that they're fighting through HIAs if you consider the valuable player. Yeah. And, it, like... You could tell straight away with the Wonga Blake one, um, he wasn't concussed. He was playing down for a penalty. Yeah. He pretty much got back up. Um, they went another three tackles before, and they waited until Parramatta got the ball before they blew the penalty, which is shit. Anyway, if you're going to blow up, blow up straight away. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to play, if you're going to take HIA seriously, you don't play advantage to the attacking team for another three tackles if one of the attacking yeah. players is injured. 
you stop the yeah, game right. and get him off the field. That's what they should have well, done. Well, that, that, that's 100% correct. Right. Blah, blah, blah. That, that's 100% correct. I just, Ash Taylor uh, in the Titans-Warriors game. Yeah. It, it annoys me that HIA is dependent on what, who you are and what position the game is in. Yeah. If they're going to do it properly. He got belted. He got caught. Ball got out. I think Warriors got the ball. He stayed down. He ended up going off for a HIA. It didn't look in the shot. Um, they'd have been hit. And I'm watching it going. He pretty much laid down and then got up. And he was feeling around his mouth, getting the blood out, talking to the trainer. And no one's ever going to say it in the media. Luckily, we're not in the media. I'm not going to say any players' names either. I've been concussed. You've been concussed. It's not hard to look as though you've been concussed. Nah, you just start, you start stumbling now, around. That's when why you people... watch it, you can see when someone is concussed and when someone is, I got hit pretty hard here, but if I lay down a bit longer, it's going to look even worse. Yeah. Like, um, I'm sorry, if you an ankle as a defender, it's not on you, but that's part of the game, and it's play on unless you're in, like, the middle of the ruck and people are going to run over the top of you. And that's why I don't understand. Attacking team um, to attack that injured player, you get the advantage. And teams are taking advantage as far as it's a free interchange for 10 minutes as well. Yeah. It, it's... It, 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 the rules... Probably the whole situation is probably a bit hidden right now because of everything else that's going on. But there's going to be a moment when it's going to get brought up again because someone they're, they're, they're all manipulating it. I just yeah. know I specifically watched that Newcastle game and I just thought that Ponga should have been off in like the 60th minute or something. Because it's, as far as I'm concerned, two head knocks in a game automatically rules you out even if it's not showing signs of concussion. Concussion can come up two days later. Yeah, definitely. So... Yeah. I, I talked about this, I think, we, oh, it wasn't dad, it might have been someone else. In ice hockey, they use a rule called embellishment. So if you get hit and then you like throw a head up or jump backwards more than you usually would have to try and make the hit look worse, um, you get penalised instead of the person putting the shot on. Um, I try to relate that to in soccer where a lot of Australians mm. they hate is the theoretical nonsense that happens when a player's been tackled and they're rolling around like their legs cut off. Um, I'd love to see embellishment brought into that. Whereas if you get fouled and you're rolling around grabbing your legs, it hurts that much, you're off. So if you're hurting that much, there's no way you can continue. So you're done for mm. the game. If you jump up and be like, no, 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 I'm actually all right, yellow card anyway. Yeah, you'll still get the foul because it was a bad tackle. But you're not that hurt, man. You're just trying to sell it. So yellow yeah. card for embellishment. I'd love to see that come in. Um, it could be something that we could look at down the track. I'd love to see that. Five-minute embellishment penalty. Um, it's hard to do in a HIA, but other stuff you definitely could do. And who cares about the red tape involved? Just put a, put a fine line down. I, I would love to see a five-minute simbin. Yeah, we, we still got defense. it, don't we? No. no. <laughs> I don't even know if because, we get time to the games this week, guys. I don't know. There's not, we're not missing out on much. They're all pretty boring. Yeah, we'll just touch on the big games, I reckon. Like, um, I'd, I'd love to talk, talk about the Melbourne-Canberra game. Um, I feel sorry for Canberra. They're, not gonna, they're done now. They can't yeah, win without we're about to go to We're about to go to charges, injuries, and signings. Oh, and sorry. And that's enough to talk about. So, judiciary from the weekend, which will probably put us on another freaking tangent. Anyway, Dragons winger Jordan Pereira facing two-match suspension after being hit with a shoulder charge. Um, facing a two-match ban from an early guilty plea or an unsuccessful thing. I'll tell you what, man. Ravalawa was putting shots on Manly all night. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mark Nichols from the Rabbitohs challenging a dangerous contact charge, hoping to reduce it from a grade two to grade one. If successful, when added to a 70 incident free discount, he'll be free to play. Found guilty, he'll miss two weeks. Now, big one with regards to judiciary from the weekend is the Latrell Mitchell, Josh Reynolds 
involvement. So Latrell Mitchell's taken the early guilty plea for both his charges from Friday night, meaning he'll be out for the next two weeks. Uh, he was facing a three-match ban if he took on the judiciary and lost after he received yeah, a grade two charge. Rabbitohs have been slapped with a $550 fine for a careless high tackle on Luke Garner. Josh Reynolds has accepted a two-match ban rather than risk the prospect of an extra week. Now, he was given a grade two dangerous contact for his foot contacting Campbell Graham's head. Two issues have come out of this one. People don't like Josh Reynolds and reckons he should get whatever he does. He deserves whatever mm -hmm. he gets. Um, same can be said for Latrell Mitchell. Now, we talked last week about Joey Leilua and how he got four weeks for that random shot on Dylan Edwards. That was done. Yeah. Like an absolute brain snap that wasn't planned. And he held back a bit on what he did to Dylan Edwards. It was just done that he did it. He got four weeks for that. Latrell Mitchell's was calculated, thought about, done in response to another issue, um, had a lot more malice in it, hit a guy from behind, wrapped around and smacked him in the face to cause bleeding in this guy's face, and only got two weeks, which had more, uh, it had more intensity. It was a closed fist swinging around, hitting someone from behind that it wrapped around and hit him in the front of the face. Now, him yeah. getting two weeks and Josh Reynolds getting two weeks for trying to kick a ball that's on the ground. Granted, he missed the ball and contacted Campbell Graham's head. If you look at the still image that's on NRL.com, if I'm a coach, I'm half congratulating Campbell Graham for going for the ball. The other half of me slapping him around the head again, for not diving on it. Because he's on a football field with his head down, facing the ground, grabbing a football. Mm. The dumbest position you can put yourself in apart from going in for a tackle head first. Did Josh Reynolds do anything wrong? He accidentally kicked someone in the face. As a coach, if I'm watching that and there's a loose ball on the ground, I want my player doing whatever the hell they can to get possession of that ball. If there's the opportunity yeah, it was, to kick it downfield and chase it, freaking do it. It's what Queensland oh, Origin was built on in the 2000s. I, I jump on it. I um, I did. I, I will admit I haven't really watched this too much because, to be honest, I couldn't be bothered. There's too much shit all on this, and you touched on it earlier. Why? Because it's Latrell Mitchell and Josh Reynolds. Mm. No matter what those guys do, and I, I, I'm not a fan of both of them, but saying that too, no matter what those two do, it is so divided both ways that there's no, you, no one's going to have an unbiased uh, position on it. And that's why I'm like, well, look, from what I can stand, you're right. Josh Reynolds, a complete accident. Latrell Mitchell was looking at it from an outsider's point of view, completely wrong, worse than Leilua. But um, it's all exacerbated because it's not two clean skins like a Morris oh. brother or Jared Croker doing it. Because if Jared Croker had done exactly the same thing Josh Reynolds did, everyone would be like, okay, that was a pure accident, is what it is. But the fact it's Josh Reynolds, they're like, oh, what a grub. So I, I don't... Oh, I'm not looking at it like that. I can see why Josh Reynolds got two weeks. Um, because his foot made contact with the dude's face, and someone <laughs> tried to use the argument that people get two weeks for accidentally hitting someone in the head during a tackle. I'm like, yeah, but in a tackle, you're not going in um for the ball and accidentally hitting someone in the head. You're going in to hit somewhere in that region, their chest, their shoulder, whatever, and you've got it slightly wrong. And you've hit him in the head, but your intent is to try and hit the player and put him on their ass. The intent here was to try and kick the ball down the field, miss and kick the guy in the face. It's the same as if you've got a high boot in soccer and you've missed the ball, um, you'll get yellow carded. What shitted me about this whole situation is that the media was talking about whatever Reynolds gets, Mitchell should get or vice versa. That's ah. bullshit. What Mitchell did was a hundred times worse. Um, and it was in retaliation of this. I get that he sent out for his mate, 
Um, Reynolds didn't go in there to kick Campbell Graham in the head. His leg was already swinging before Campbell Graham even bent down. And Campbell Graham had nothing against it. He kind of got up and walked off. And I'd say if the roles were reversed, he would have been trying to do the same thing. Um, I think Graham Manley came out and said they both should have been Simbin. Yeah, no, nah, that's not right. Yeah, it, it, it's just, um, it's all blown up because who they are. And it annoys me that for that reason. But you're right. Josh Reynolds, he, he couldn't have done anything more. Well, you know, there's a theory he could have dived on it, but he's an attacking player. So if That's he dived he on it, he wouldn't have got there because Campbell Graham, to actually dive, slows you down compared to staying mm. on your feet running and trying to kick the ball. Um, anyway, Remy yeah. Smith will miss a week following an LT guilty plea on his tackle against Broncos captain Alex Glenn. Um... That's the one that did Glenn's knee. By the look of it, he was the third one in, tackling him low. It wasn't a full cannonball. He didn't dive at his ankles. He did hit him around the thigh area, and it slid down into his knee, but all within a split second. It, it, it did the damage. It was a dangerous tackle, so he's going to miss a week. And Royce Hunt will avoid suspension. So a few big ones out of there. Reynolds missing for two weeks. Marshall comes straight in. Uh, for South, you'd say Alex Johnson will go to fullback, and no, Braden Corey Bennett, Allen. Uh, oh, Corey Allen will come in on the wing. No, because yeah, they got they're getting rid of Alex Johnson. Oh, that's right. Mm. Anyway, uh, let's go from there to injuries before we go to signings, and then we'll finish with a couple of games. Uh, all right, so Jesse Bromwich set to miss three to four weeks with a medial ligament knee injury. Um, it's a big loss. Big loss. So, playmaker Riley Jacks only suffered a cork knee quad um, after initial court thought he may have done his MCL, so he should be all right. Cam Munster, Vunavalu, and Fleece Kafusi will all undergo fitness testing this week, so they will be three big inclusions. If any Storm can cover a prop, sorry, if any team can cover a prop, losing a prop will be the Storm, because Kimi, yeah. Timmy Kamika so, has been playing, Max Keane. So, um, I, I was watching this game and I was absolutely stoked about Darren Choney getting the run. Yeah, yeah. Because I called that at the start of the year. That's another one of my debutantes. Look at but, you. yeah, I know. I'm so proud of myself. But in saying that too, I'm pretty sure he played like 15 minutes. He missed about four tackles and gave away two penalties. And the speed Craig of the Bellamy game. Kind of got rid of him real yeah. quick. Um, I can look up his stats probably, but I you know, there's other front rollers there. But I unfortunately I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't get another run. Get me <laughs> it was not a good debut. Oh, if he was playing for Canberra, he definitely would. Uh, <laughs> Roos, how's this for a story? Hey, R- Roos is, let's go back to Thursday. Roos has played Cowboys. Brett Morris ruled out pre game with regards to groin tightness. Like, oh, it could be a bit of a loss. Right? Matt Ikevalu comes in, scores five tries. Um, it's pretty yeah, good. It is. It's, it's ridiculous. That is why they're going. That is why they are going for free this year. How's Ryan Hall? A eh? scores like six hundred tries in the Super League. Doesn't even get one in the NRL yet. Yet the other winger who comes in gets five, and they don't Look, even go to side one. Well, actually, uh, the first time they went to his side. He scored. They called it back for a forward pass. Yeah. How, how would you? What, what, what player in the NRL would you compare Ryan Hall to as the way he plays? Oh, jeez. Um, probably Vatavai, going back to him. Vatavai, was, Vatavai looks quicker. Yeah, it's just a big, bulky... Yeah. He, he literally just look, runs over people. That's his job. Look, look what, from what I understand... Maybe back to Tony Williams Ryan, when he was on wing. From what I've seen of Ryan Hall, and I know he's, what, 32 or something? I don't rate him. I don't think he's that good. (laughs) He's good. He just hasn't had, like, out of any team, that's the one that we're not going to get much of a chance. Um, In the Literally, with regard, unless it's injury. I'd say he'd be a starting winger on most other clubs. Uh, Bar maybe Melbourne. Uh, You'd definitely get a run at Newcastle. Definitely get a run at... Who's your wingers? Garrick and... To just full, probably not at Manly. Probably get a run at Broncos. I, I'd say probably get a run over Garrick. Yeah, okay, well, you need a goal kicker, that's all. 
Um, Not Garrick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, who, I, I don't rate him that high, but it is what it is. He's probably just over his prime and enjoying his three games a Game year in time. Australia. That's it. Mm-hmm. Hooker Jake Frem will undergo HIA protocols. Uh, Freddie Lussick will come in if Friends ruled out. They're getting pretty short on hookers. Alex Twell's a chance. I'm taking on Brisbane. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, Eli Katoa. Elise Katoa is hoping to make a return from an ankle injury this round. Uh, Alex Glenn, part of that remiss. Smith tackle expected to miss up to eight weeks after scans confirmed an MCL injury. I'm curious. Who are they going to put as captain? Carry getting in? Nah, there it goes. <laughs> Carry again. Haas. <laughs> Lot of G, yeah. uh, Daniel Saifidi facing one to two weeks on the sidelines posterior cruciate injury there's been a lot of knee injuries this year yeah. uh, Mitchell Pierce another one of those confirmed he'll be fine now here's the big ones like Canberra uh, Hodson and Bailey Simonson both ruled out for the season after injuries suffered in Saturday night's loss Hodgson's ruptured his ACL. Simonson's shoulder damage is worse than first feared. Now, uh, Hobson, Hobson, Hodgson will consult a specialist this week to determine what surgery he'll need to repair the ligament. I'd say knee surgery. Simonson, I, so uh, meet with a surgeon and raise the visuals who are most likely to require surgery, which will end his I, I, I don't think Hodgson can come back to what he used to be. <laughs> that's, his, that's, that's his second ACL in two years, but it's not different, the same different knee. Different knee, yeah. So he's, both his knees are gone now. And it's just like, oh, you I, I'd guy. probably rather that than two on the same. Yeah, no, I understand that. But now he's both his knees are weak. Yeah, and the difference with ligaments and tendons compared to bones, bones can come back to 100%. Ligaments and tendons can't. Ever rolled your ankle? Have fun with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Vafita did his hammy, unlikely to be fit. Uh, for next week, Eels halfback Mitch Moses is touch and go. Let's just not go for their clash against Man- for his clash against Manly <laughs> next week. Uh, Liam Knight. Well, this is actually some good news. Uh, it was a late withdrawal from his sides match against the West Tigers. Initial fears was he'd done his Achilles in the warm up, uh, end up being a twisted ankle, two to four weeks. Uh, and Val Holmes didn't return for the second half, so he did end up playing, um, even though, but he did hurt that a recurrence of that ankle, and he missed the second half of the game against the Roosters. So, if you haven't been keeping in touch, there's a lot to look at um, with regards to injuries, but. Listeners for Canberra, Josh Hodgson, <laughs> Bailey Simonson, Sia Soliola, Emre Gula, Corey Horsra, John Bateman. Oh, fuck. That's six of your starters. Look, uh, the only person they're going to lose, the only one they can lose now that's going to make it worse, if they lost Papali, see you later. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Manly's list is way shorter, but I'm like, Dylan Walker, Tom Trebojevic, Adena Fenua Blake, Manes Finau. I'm like, they wouldn't mind most of them, eh? Oh, <laughs> and Kamikamika for the Storm, he's got a lower back, he's well, out indefinitely. New- Newcastle have a few injuries, though. As is Tom Eisenhuth. Yeah. Sofidi, Connor Watson, Mitch Barnett, yeah. So there's a fair few, man, like. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, um, signings tracker. Let's have a look. So Herman S.A.S.A. will join the Titans oh, oh. from Newcastle. It's a good pick up for the uh, Titans. I don't I like know. it. But you've got to do different things if you want to be holding on to Tex Hoy and Bradman Best. You've got to cut costs elsewhere because they're going to be up. Nah, there. this is all, this is all yeah. from Frizzell. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's all from Frizzell because Tex Hoy, I don't know where they're going to fit him in sooner rather than later because they're going to put Watson in the utility spot. So... And he's a fullback. That's his main position. And he's yeah. Like Look, I, 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 if he holds it out and pushes for that utility spot for a few years, maybe, but in Newcastle, the utility spots are Watson and Man, really. So they're ahead of x right now. <laughs> Canberra Raiders have confirmed the sign the second round by Harry Rushton. <laughs> On a three-year deal starting 2021. So he's from Wigan. He's an 18-year-old. Don't know much about him. I'll have to do a bit of research. Um, 
Gragans have confirmed the sign of Cade Ellis a day after his grander release by Penrith. It's convenient. Uh, so Cade Ellis is shooting across the Dragons. And that's pretty much it with regards to signings. Uh, JTB. Oh, yeah, extend to Noah Brown. We need that one. All right. Um, with regards to games on the weekend, we can kind of fly through this. Roosters absolutely put Cowboys to the sword first game back. If you saw the faces on some of the fans of the Cowboys, <laughs> sorry, the faces of some of the Cowboys fans in the stadium. You, you talk about injuries. Roosters have about eight injuries. They're up to yeah, their fourth string hooker. If, if Jake Friend's out, they're up to their fourth string hooker. Yeah. And, but in saying that too, Lachlan Lane played pretty well on the weekend. And who they missed? Um, they lost Billy Smith early in the season. and um, Yeah, Boyd Corden is out. Um, who was the other centre they lost? Dan Tupo's. No. It's something like this Canberra, the Canberra Roosters game coming up in round 10. There's six yeah, there's like players from yeah. missing from injury. Um, All right, so. Cowboys are shocking. 16 to 42, lost to the Roosters. Luke Keary out of field day. So did Tedesco. My yeah, and so did Fantasy. I think he scored 326 points in fantasy as a captain. It's nuts. Um, <laughs> Cowboys look shot, eh? Like, yeah. they just looked horrible. They, Reese Robson, they actually scored the first try. They're up 6 uh, 0. Uh, and he scored another try, so Reese Robson picking up a double. But Roosters were just, yeah, Kiri was fantastic. Cole Flanagan, man. That's yeah. to do with coming on this podcast, eh? Because he's been just smashing. We'll have to get him back on and have a chat with how the season's been going. He scored another try. His conversions, his kicking's been awesome. He's just, he's building confidence every week. He's kind of doing yeah. what Cleary did when he came into the, to Penrith, just slowly yeah. building till he got to that elite level. Uh, my favourite game of the weekend, Titans versus Warriors. Warriors were up 12-0 after, I'm going to say in the first 10 minutes, it might have been a little bit longer than that. No, there you go. Second minute and seventh minute. So second and seventh minute, I'm watching this, and both the tries look quite good. They're up 12-0 after seven minutes. Oh, oh shit, here we go. Titans got one back in the 19th minute to make it 12-6 at half time. And if you told us that the Titans were going to keep the Warriors scoreless from the 8th minute till the 80th, I'd be going, yeah, nah. They did. They, they kept the Warriors out for 72 minutes after they scored all their points. And Titans ground back all the way and scored in the 74th minute. Um, the guy who got showed up in the centres, Bo Fairmore, got absolutely killed in the centres early and um, ended up scoring in the match-winning try. Hey, what, though? Good on the tight. Um, I feel what Warriors are done. They are so done. Man, the first 10 minutes, they looked really good. Yeah, and, and then 70 minutes later. Yeah. I was, just, I was watching this going, oh, shit, man, this is going to be a rot. Uh, yeah. Credit to the Titans, man. Like, we question Justin Holbrook's team. I still don't think it's the correct team for the players that he's got, but they're showing grit and determination. Well, and it's, it's effort. We, we've said it all along. He picks players who actually want to be there. Yeah. He, Not on their paycheck. He's picking players who he, he'll pick a, you know, $150,000 player over a $800,000 player if they're going to want to be there more. So no, look at Nathan Peets. He's third string hooker. He can't even get a run behind yeah. Mitch Brain and Aaron Clark. Oh, fourth string hooker, actually, and Tanner Boyd. Yeah, and then you got... Because every the week. Only, the only question mark they have is um, Ash Taylor. So it'd be interesting what happens now with him. Yeah. Um, Rabbitohs Tigers. You had two teams going in with four wins, four losses. Um... Dane Gagai, we've talked about. He's a winger during Origin time. We would be coming up to Origin time. Got his, can you believe his first career hat trick? Really? Hmm. Yeah. So Dane Gagai getting a hat trick. James Roberts getting across as well. Um, this is something you don't see every day with Adam Reynolds kicking because he's been kicking really well. Uh, zero from four conversions. But he got one. Yeah, he'll, come. he'll bounce back. He'll be fine. 
So you're saying that Dangago scores on the wing, but even so, uh, Josh, yeah, he'll, I, he'll be fine. Latro, yeah, and Reese Hoffman scoring in the 63rd and 68th minute uh, to kind of bring them back in touch, 18 10. It wasn't as good a game as I was expecting it was going to be, but it wasn't the best conditions either. It was wet. Um, it was pretty much bucketing down in the second half at points. Yeah, which isn't, is, the isn't needed. really good for those suit of those teams. No. Uh, James Roberts, first full game back, I think. Uh, played the full 80. Uh, looked quite good. I'm just having a look at that possession-wise. Exactly 50-50. Huh. Time in possession, 33.09. Completion rates, 83.81. Yeah, it was pretty even across the board. Rabbit's just having enough of the chocolates there. Uh, that moves to five and four. Oh, this game, far out. So you had Ikubalu score five tries for the Roosters. You got Charlie Staines on debut scoring four tries for Penrith. Sandy, who's been on our show um, from the UK, she hasn't missed a Penrith game yet. I think her tweet was, what did this kid have for breakfast? Uh, <laughs> from four tries in his debut. When this came across the score, I didn't see this end score straight away. And I saw the score pop up on the bottom of the screen. I'm like, oh, shit, Sharks got 24. All right, Panthers got 56. <laughs> he scored 24 points. You're expecting to be in the game. Yeah. They doubled the um, score and a bit. Yeah, so... I didn't watch this game, but um, if Pembroke are going to go far, they've got to look at that 24. They don't have to look at that 56 or 54. Yeah. They need to look at that. They, that's a, And I'm not saying it's a problem yet, but um, because we both know Cronulla can turn it on when they need to. But, yeah, that's, that's the only thing. they just got to look at that side of the field instead of the attack because their attack's there. We look, Crichton. Cleary, Kickow, um, Fisher Harris, all them. That's that's a lot of attack right there. Um, I just got to look at that, yeah, because they can't let twenty six points get scored by the Roosters or Melbourne. Do you know what the so Penrith ran out to a twenty six nil lead after twenty five minutes? Yeah. Um. So they won the first half twenty six twelve. And they won the second half 30 to 12. <laughs> like, that's an absolute pasting. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Cleary didn't score a try. Jeez, that's all right. Um, oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, that's all I got. Um, so, yeah, Penny Panthers keep rocking and rolling as they do. I think who came out today and said there's only four teams who can win the comp? Uh, Penrith. Parramatta, Roosters, and Storm. So to put Fenrir... I'm going to say no to that, but I'll wait. Um, Jeez, this one was hard to watch. Um, Broncos versus Bulldogs. <laughs> Broncos... Broncos finally getting the win. Yeah, so oh, I've seen like a lot a, of... Um, a lot more Broncos jerseys come out over the weekend and a lot more Broncos supporters come out of their... I don't, see this, buying, I don't see this buying Seabold... Any more time. Beating a team whose coach then gets sacked or well, then quits that week because their team's that bad and you're beating them. Um, kudos to the Broncos for two points, but I think I said it from the bits that I watched it. Um, you could take the Sharks who got pants. They would have most likely beaten the Broncos. Tigers would have beaten the Broncos. Yeah, I'd say well, Titans would have beaten the Broncos. I, like, I don't actually... Um, I wouldn't go as far as say Manly would have because they were freaking horrible, but um, I, I I really liked how um, Bronco, the, some of their tries, Broncos tries, really looked good tries. Like they looked like they're looking up instead yeah. of trying to create the block play. They're looking up, especially that Anthony Milford kick for um, Asako. That was a great try. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. So yeah, they they they're <laughs> they're showing insy insy bits of um, glimpses. Of what they could be like, that list of 14th on the ladder, um, and they're versing the Tigers next week. So they could put a score the on them. 
who could who could put a they could put a score on it. Tigers, job, obviously. yeah, no, Tigers could put a score on them if they come if, if they don't get some I don't know positivity out of the Bulldogs game. Yeah, and Tigers could put fifty like on them back. easily. Yeah, so <laughs> I I think we could have a headline: Nolfaluma scores five tries this weekend. Um, now this game here, this is one of the weirdest starts to a game. Um, I, I've seen in a fair while. And this was Canberra versus the Storm. There was a there was a point where I think they panned off the field to both Bellamy and then Ricky Stewart. Um, if you're a Fox Sports, uh, if you have Foxtel, sorry, they've been doing this preview sort of ad about Bellamy and Stewart being good, like best of mates, playing with each other at Raiders, all this sort of stuff. Um, and they... We've already talked about how many errors there were in this game from two teams you don't really expect errors from. And it got to a point where both Ricky Stewart and Craig Bellamy had lost the ability to speak. They were literally just speechless. Bellamy had just yeah. this look at his face expression going, I can't, I can't believe what's going on to a point where I can't even yell and scream. There, there was one moment there just, where... Um, Canberra, I uh, know Melbourne were coming out of their own line, and I think they passed it to their right hand side. So, like, Branko lead at a car, yeah, and they dropped it, I think, three times in a row coming out, yeah. And so, then the fourth time they got a scrum, and I reckon, I reckon it was Vossi. <laughs> I love when Vossi comes, I know you don't like him, but I love when he commentates. And he, um, they passed it out to the left to Justin Olin, yeah. And he, he dropped, dropped, it, dropped it. <laughs> and he and before that he goes, I bet you that I got it out to the right, and they're not even gonna let it go to the right hand side, then pass it out to the left and Justin Island dropped and he goes, I quit, I'm out. And then <laughs> in the second half, it was um but I think Kronk said yeah, it was Kronk saying, Oh, he's not getting the ball off Smith anymore this game. Um Smith's just gonna take it himself and then it got past the Smith and Smith dropped it. And they were just like uh, <laughs> Okay, like, yeah, it's one of these nights. And there were passes getting dropped. There were tries not getting scored. Mm. There were kicks out on the full. There was... Um, it was let's put it this way. When, these, when the competition came back, these two teams played each other. And it was, we were stoked because it was high quality. Then it comes to this, they had a few injuries. They are a bit tired. And it's kind of like going... <laughs> oh. um, Canberra got to yeah, struggle was, for the rest of the year. With Havili at, at hooker, they need it. They, he, he's not an eighty-minute hooker. They yeah, well, they did it last else. year. No, not last year. Year before. Um, yeah, went along all right. They actually picked up a few wins. They they, they played a lot more just crash and bang footy, which they've got the forwards to do that. But that's also more shined as well. Yeah, not not <laughs> at the moment. So yeah, it's going to be hard to see Canberra getting out of this one. I'm trying to think who else they've got as a. You too, because I had. Kurt oh no, they've got Randall last year, but he's gone up to. No, nah, they've got Randall. He's a young. He's an ex Newcastle player. That's as far as I know. They've got. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, that's that's um, they've got what 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 was thrown up, and I had a bit of a think about. It. I don't know how he'd go. They really wanted to. They can bring um Matt Frawley in either at hooker. Or throw him oh, yeah. in a halfback and put George Williams at hooker. I don't know how George Williams would go with that, but that's probably if they're in a massive bind. Um, I think you're going to know what Ricky Stewart's plans are by who he names, because Rapana is going to come on to the wing, obviously, for Simmonson. Who he names as his utility is probably going to be his mm. stock at option. Because Savili will get number nine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you just got to. Um, Let's go to the Mutant Bowl. <laughs> Sunday game, Knights versus Eels. I was let down by this game. Um, I think both teams were off. Uh, yeah, you want to go first before I tee off? Well, no, you go because I didn't have much for this one. 10-4 to the Eels. <laughs> um, as we all know, I, I really like to be right. And I was right about Newcastle's attack. <laughs> it was just woeful. But in saying that too, I think 
they prove that Parramatta will not win the grand final this year. Um, Ricky, uh, no, not Craig Bellamy and Trent Robinson will be licking their lips, looking how Newcastle, with bad attack, at points in time for a lot of the game, were ripping through Parramatta's defence. Like Parramatta's defence on both sides of their ta- defence, like on the edges, uh, second row or an out, oh. they were absolutely woeful on the weekend, honestly. It's just that Newcastle could not get that last pass in, that they didn't score a lot more tries. Their defence was just... Like, Newcastle's would, back five is not ideal. Would that be the collapse were, in Parramatta? Because they've been quite good. Um, but no... Um, just, see... I, I reckon Newcastle, their forwards, um, done a, done a few things to Parramatta than that um, Parramatta weren't used to. Like Daniel Safiti, we're going to miss him because he was really good. I will give them credit that Justin uh, Junior Paulo was out at half time from back spasms, and Nathan Brown dominated. Yeah, um, and Reed and Campbell good. Gillard was good. He was good, but Clemmer was better. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying that battle was good. Yeah. Like, I think our forwards um, won the middle, but our backs couldn't capitalise because we just... I, well, Adam Bryan said it. We, he, he's focused on the entire time he's been with them on defence, hasn't done anything in attack with them. And that shows their attack is just horrible. Um, I don't think... Param- about, you're talking about Parramatta's defence... Um, they've let in 96 points in nine games. Mm. Um, the next best defense is the Roosters on 112 points. Yeah, no, I just, um, I don't know many teams. I, like, I just didn't see many teams do that to Parramatta. Like they that Par- Newcastle blew a lot of opportunities, like a lot of opportunities. It was um, it was frustrating the whole time, but it kind I kind of saw that it was a little bit of a blueprint how to beat Parramatta because um, they they just their defence on their edges. Like the middle's fine, the middle's great. They're they're fine on their edges. Is just really because Michael Jennings isn't known as a defender. No, uh, um, neither is Wonga Blake. They're very they're not ideal in defence. And then Ryan Madison went missing all game. I didn't, like, he wasn't, he, he let Jai Field get, um, Jai Field done really well stopping Fitzgibbon. But he had a Madison good game, should have been there. Huh? He had a good game, yeah. yeah. But, um, because I think he stopped him three times. But Madison went missing. That's his position to stop Fitzgibbon. That's his job. And he yeah. went missing a lot. Um yeah, I just their edges um, were were not a grand final winning team. I don't think, and you put a Roosters team whose attack is literally the elite level of the entire NRL up against that that edge defense. But they they're going to rip break it when they versed a few weeks ago. I just looking at it like so. I think the commentator said Parramatta don't look themselves whether I think we're talking about this last week when they're going to have their down week like yeah. they've had last year and the year before they play like they've played really well and then had this run of bad games in them whether that was a start of one I'm hoping so got mainly next week um or you, maybe yeah. and you can't blame them um a bit of oh no you can't I just well, I'm just saying complacency. If you look at the last month of football they've had, they've had that Roosters game. They've had the Derby against Penrith. They've had the tight game against Manly. They've had some pretty yeah. big games against okay. the top of the table. And they're like, all right, we've got Newcastle. We know that they're talented, but compared to what we've just been through, this shouldn't be too... All right, I got, I got a question for you. I don't think that would have been said out loud, um, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that was in the back of a couple of the... Oh, I got a question for you. Um, everyone's saying para the para the yardstick, right? I'd say Roosters. Do Roosters ever have an off day? Um, yeah. Who? Oh, all right, let me go back. 
They've only lost against Melbourne this entire time. No, Manly beat them. Round two, thank no, you. No, no, I mean, since the COVID started. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Ben, I'd, say yeah, that lost half, I'd say that second half against um, the Storm. Nah, they were awesome. Melbourne was just better. No, See, no I, one I, scores that many quick points against the Roosters. I, I just... It happened in ages. That, I just don't think Parramatta are the yardstick that everyone's putting them so I think Roosters are, are just so much further ahead than them. It, it worries me. I think like Dragons a couple of weeks ago showed that you could, you can get closer and you can ruffle them. Um, we said Roosters ran over the top of that as they did against Parramatta the week before that. It's yeah, I, I just we've already talked about this. It's there's no other team except for the Storm showing it last week that can stay with them for eighty minutes. Yeah, Parramatta and I don't think, and for that reason, I I, I think that rules them out on um of winning the grand finals. Yeah, I honestly the think that is they've had a big game against the Roosters early in the season. So they know yeah. they would have seen Brad Arthur would have seen this is what we need to fix up. Uh, this is what we need to be able to do. He might already be trying to put some of that sort of stuff in place. We don't know. That's taken them away from some oh, of the games. So yeah. Do you know how you're talking about Bellamy and Stewart being friends? Mm. So Brad Arthur and Adam O'Brien are be roommates and play in the same team. Brad Arthur then pulled out of playing and coached him for about five years. Coach who? Adam O'Brien. Um, they used to be roommates. They're, it used to be Adam O'Brien and his wife and Brad Arthur and his wife living in the same house. It's pretty cool. Wonder if the, I wonder if Tedesco, Moses and... Uh, was it Brooks? Or still yeah, in the same house. Uh, yeah, they do. We just um, passed this last game, hey, Wally? It's funny, actually. <laughs> um, leading up to this game, Wally was on a few weeks ago, uh, sent me a clip of a huge comeback that the Dragons had done over the Eagles. But he hasn't actually sent me anything after the game, which I was quite surprised at. No, he, he wanted you to wear a Dragons jersey during this podcast. Well, I've still got your Newcastle one because you forgot two days in a row. So oh, I'm not complaining, but... I, I did not forget um, a thing. He did. <laughs> it wasn't me who forgot it. Yeah. 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 Um, so, the so Eagles are actually winning this game 4 0. Joel Thompson scoring against his um, previous club, which he actually has played pretty well against him. And then Manly looked <laughs> good. Hey, like, I was looking through the ladder after this, and we've scored the fourth least points. Out of the entire comp, only the Bulldogs, Titans, and yeah, but you scored less you guys points. are known for close games. Yeah, I hate that. Um, <laughs> you want to blow someone out, don't you? Well, we've got that's the thing. Like I look at it, and we've got the talent and potential to be able to do that. Yeah. I, I just think, especially Jake Trebojevich represents this probably more than anyone else. I think he's actually gone backwards under Des compared to what he was doing beforehand. He, I see a little bit in in him of what happened with James Graham, um, where Ooh. James Graham was so effective when he came to the NRL, when he was running the ball hard, and then every now and then he'd get to the line and pop a pass away, like a really nice yeah. left pass through the line. And then that evolved over time to him running three metres short of the line and flicking the ball out the back, which worked a bit for the first season or so. And then everyone switched on. So they said, just let him run because he's going to pass. Yeah. I, I realised Cade Cuss, I liked Manly's look of their team. Brendan Elliott went to fullback. Cade Cuss went to 5'8". Jake Trebojevic was just running the ball. And every time he got it, you knew he was just going to pass. It wasn't even a job for the... He wasn't making the defence make a decision. Um, and then when he did decide to run, he was going from a standing start three metres before the defence. Yeah. He's not a big yeah. guy. He's not going to just run over people. I, I think that ball making has become his main priority rather than running the ball. Um, and it, it, it's hurting us because he's literally just standing there. Passing. 
as a as a hundred and whatever kilo five eight, just passing the ball out the yeah. back where he should be running and getting his little one arm offloads and stuff out of out of play because it is his talent's just being wasted. Like yeah. I say that he still ran one hundred and fifty four meters and made his tackles as he has done, but that's because he's an elite player, not because yeah. it's working against him. No, but they're not. And I love Jake. I love how he plays, but they're not dangerous meters. Nah. Well, Paul Vaughan ran for 237. I know they're playing prop compared to a lock, but... No, it's the same position these days. Yeah, and it just... It, he, he's been wasted, I think. Um, yeah. I'm not really liking what I'm seeing from Ruben Garrick. He's not playing with the same sort of intensity as he played. Do like. you have another winger? We got Albert Hopawadi sitting there, um, but th- this is the big thing. This is what we talked about preseason. When Manly's got their one to seventeen on the field, they're one of the best lists in the comp, minus your your centers or your weak link. Uh, if they don't have their one to seventeen, they've got some of the, but they've got the least depth of the big clubs up there, um, like. Morgan Boyle, Sean Kepi, Taniel Paseca. Like, if you're starting props playing 36 minutes, it's not great. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's just not much. You, 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 you guys, you know, like you said, you guys got a team to survive. You just got to, someone's, your injury management needs to be looked at because you just keep getting injuries. Like, Cherry Evans doing, trying to do too much now. Yeah. Martin um, played 44 minutes. He's not looking damaging. He's not looking... Yeah, he's tired. I mean, he shouldn't be. He's had two weeks off. Yeah, no, nah, he's tired. He's got that broken he's... finger. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah no, you, you guys good. just... You guys just got a... Um, <laughs> and we had one of the easy... I hate to say it, but Dylan Walker's got to come back at six because he... Mm-hmm. he, he he put a lot more into that team than I thought he did. Yeah. Um, Cherry Evans, everyone's criticised him, but he was the only one having a crack trying to attack in your game in that game. I know he threw he threw one momentously bad pass, but he look that was big, <laughs> every other situation there should have been a manly player there. It's the reality of it. Unfortunately, who was criticising him? There should have been a manly player there. Um, I think it's funny as well. Like commentators rave about his long kicking game. It's not that good. Like, he's got an awesome torp on him, but you try to get him to drop punt consistently a whole field or a long kick, it's not that good. Like, he, he dropped yeah. short so many times. His short kicking yeah. game's good. His deaf kicking game... Cross field kicking is fantastic. Yeah, but long to get you out of trouble, not yeah. so cool. So, I hate to say it, but we look in trouble going forward. I don't really want to play <laughs> Parramatta next week. I much more look forward to it a few weeks ago when we had it a bit of roll on our whole team there. But um, are we sneaking Billy back onto the podcast? This one should be it. This one should be at Brookie. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything for this week, guys. We've had a couple of heated arguments. Uh, <laughs> throw us some questions. Throw us some. Ah, oh. Voice of ours, it's not that hard. I actually did one the other day just to test. It took like 20 seconds. Hmm. Um, we'll be going again Thursday morning. You'll hear us again. I'm um, coming into round 10, and this will be the halfway stick. So after this, we'll be having a look at teams' final or runs into the finals. Anything left from you, Jared? Nah, I'm all good. <laughs> cool. All right. Toodles. See you. Thank you for tuning in to Six Again. Connect with the show on Twitter, Instagram, and the Six Again website. All links via the show's bio. Be sure to check out Adam's Craft Beer Choice of the Week.